So just a reminder for you then, the starting seven for England. We'll just run back over that one. In goalkeeper, we got Kareem Brown. In goal defence was James O'Connor. Wing defence is James McClellans. Centre is James Thompson Boston. In wing attack is Ross Oliphant. Goal attack is Nathan Ramsdale Owen. And then in goal shooter, it's Kai Lewis. And for Jamaica, in goalkeeper, we've got Ramon Parks. Goal defence, Emmy Foster. Wing defence, Rajon Brown. In centre is Maturi Jackson. Wing attack is Marlon McCallum. Goal attack is their captain, Kurt Dale. And in goal shooter, they've got Raheem Wallace. And our run players for this evening, of course, can't do it without them. We've got Gary Burgess, Jenny Fiss Fissenden and Lisa Bellano. We are about to be underway to start this momentous occasion. We are so excited to be here today. As all the players take a knee against any form of racism in our game. And our ball deliverer, London Giants Juniors, is Eddie Quick. And I suspect we may see him in an England shirt in the not too distant future. Here we go then, underway is an England centre pass. We're deep into the pockets to captain James Thompson Boston. And it's a bit of a wayward pass trying to find goal shooter Kai Lewis. Doesn't quite come off on this occasion. We've been told that the magic for Jamaica lays in their midcourt. They are fit, they are fast. And this is certainly going to be a fiery game as we see our first intercept from James McClelland on Circle Edge. <laughs> Having troubles in attack though. Welcome, Lucy P. How are hey, you doing? Just had a, a little swift run up from the hosting there. It was very enjoyable, wasn't it? I was belting the national anthem. Uh, we even got a second verse. I know, which do you, you know, know the words? Get. Absolutely not. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Embarrassing. And there we go, the first goal of the game goes to the Jamaican Suns. Nice use of the court whip. Or oh, suspected the replayed ball. It did not come, and there's goal number two for Jamaica. Possibly a little bit of an edgy start for England, Luce? Yeah, I think so. I think they maybe just need to settle. Remember, it's their first home test series, so there could be a few nerves out there today. Absolutely. And it's probably not the starting lineup that I certainly would have expected from England. I think there's lots of surprises, lots of spice going to be on display today. We know that Ross Oliphant starting in wing attack, traditionally a shooter for Highland Fever. So really interesting to see what combinations we get to witness today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this England squad is so stacked with talent that they could put any combination out there and it would give Jamaica a really good run for their money. But we're going to have to see how it unfolds. As we see a huge second phase ball just tumble through the hands of captain Kurt Dale. Oliphant then finds Kai deep in the pocket. We have Nathan Ramsdale Owen in goal attack. Now, would you believe he only started playing netball in January, Luce? My goodness me, that is quite an impressive statistic there, Luce. And he's already in the England men. Yep, comes from a basketball background, so lots of transferable skills. And a few turnovers early on. Maybe a little bit of nerves coming into play. James McClelland with the big, rangy arms. He's a long boy, isn't he? Liz? He is a long boy indeed, and I was surprised to see him at wing defence. We've seen him a lot at goalkeeper goal defence, but I personally love a tall wing defence, so not when I'm playing wing attack. <laughs> Right, you are, Luce. There he is, ball in hand. Back to Kareem Brown. Oh, the closing speed of the Suns is something to behold. Clever there from Thompson Boston not to force the long ball in. I tell you what, Luce, we have a lot of Jamaica fans in the house today. Although it's an England home fixture, I feel like there's pretty much even support for both sides, which is going to make for such a fiery matchup. Absolutely. And chatting to some of the boys early on, the England boys, the nerves are even more intense with this being the first home series. And a 
I suspect actually having a 50-50 crowd might make that slightly better. Yeah, slightly I worse. think so. Yeah, well, you just want the crowd to come into it, don't you? Because that's when everyone lifts their performance. That gives you the extra centimetres for the intercept. And listen to that noise. Yeah, the crowd absolutely loving it. McCallum then on the ball for Jamaica. Big swing across the circle to Kurt Dale, captain. I mean, the elevation on these guys is no joke. It is unbelievable, Lewis. I think most of them are jumping higher than my head at any given moment. <laughs> but it's so impressive as well. And what I'm really liking as well is it's still controlled. It's not erratic and loose. It's dynamic and it's athletic, but it's got that element of control and poise to it. Oliphant then looking for options. He finds Kai Lewis. Truly a standout at both the 21 and 22 in the Nationals, wasn't he, Lewis? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just athleticism in the air and the way how strongly he takes the ball as well. It's really incredible. I think that the Jamaican goalkeeper, Raymond Parks, is going to have a tough day at the office. There's also a bit of a height mismatch there as well. That was absolutely outrageous. Stopped on a dime. Honestly, my legs would just give way underneath me if I tried that. James O'Connor. Sorry, Luce, that was a well-needed goal by Jamaica. I feel like it had been a couple of minutes since they scored and we're now even back 4-4. I mean, it's exactly what we want, isn't it? A goal for goal game. Not good for the nerves, though, Luce. <laughs> so we see a long-range shot from Kurt Dale. Full short, as does the short ranger under the post from Raheem Wallace but no mistake second time of asking. Yeah, that was great rebounding position there from Wallace. And now Jamaica will look to double up here. Oh, McClelland! There he is, those pesky long arms that we spoke about. He is six foot four, James McClelland, so he is a tall boy. Not the tallest on the squad, though. No. Very good point, Luce. That title goes to Julian Vincent, who is a whopping six foot ten. My goodness me, six foot ten. I believe he is in the How squad does he today. Buy trousers? <laughs> especially made, mate, especially made. We may see him in action today. Kareem Brown then for the Thorns. And looks like we have a substitution early on. Potentially unexpected, the jumpers were on. I don't know how they're wearing jumpers in here, Luce, because it is a roasty toasty. McClellan then, looking for options, finds O'Connor. Back to McClellan, right in the middle. Great use of the central channel, but it's tipped out of court by Naturi Jackson. Lovely change of direction from Nathan Ramsdale home, but can't quite collect it. Thompson yeah. Boston. I was just going to say, I think that placement could have been a bit better, but wow, sir, he redeemed himself with that ball. Thompson Boston, obviously the captain. We did see him previously a lot at goal defence in that position for Knights, but now we see him pushed up into centre. I actually really like that move. Crowd not liking that call, though. It was a short pass deemed by Gary Burgess. We see a stunning challenge on the outside arm from McClellan and a huge ball in to Raheem Wallace. And another England turnover. Currently up by two. There really is nothing in this at all. And that change in the goal attack position, Richard Hendricks has come on and captain Kurt Dale goes to the bench. Oh, take from McClellan, but straight into the hands of Naturi Jackson. Jackson again. Woof! Now that was one heck of a split, Luce. That was unbelievable. My groin slightly hurt from watching that. But look, Jamaica now out 7-4 with the centre pass. This is really interesting, early doors. But there we go, nice pick up for England. Not time to panic, just need to remain calm and composed. But all just hugging one side of the court. Lovely centralisation from Ramsdale Owen, and he finds Lewis. All oh, but it's a little bit short. 
Kylo is, of course, a, a wonderful, truly wonderful musician. So if you're not following him on Instagram, I would highly recommend. And Voice a, of an Angel. a two-time Emna Nationals champion, Lewis. Don't forget that. He's got all the accolades as our Kylo Lewis. Wow, it is getting physical. Very spicy out there, Luce. A lovely screen there by Raheem Wallace as Richard Hendricks get his first of the game. There we go, scoreboard now double that of England. Lovely placement into Kyle Lewis, just out of the arms of Ramon Park. What oh, a rejection! Oh, and Ross Oliphant with the deflection. Not enough on it to be able to pick up. Oh, James O'Connor is a big ball up, collected by Captain Thompson Boston. Nice and steady through the midcourt. Oh my goodness, where did he come from? That was unbelievable from Jackson. But, oh, the unforced error. I mean, you said earlier that it was controlled and it was calm. It feels like we've just gone down the opposite end of the scale. A hundred percent, especially in the second half of this quarter so far. Just a little bit erratic. That was the landing space, yeah. He is down. It's a bit slow to get up. Nathan Ramsdale Owen just got time to do a few push-ups for us <laughs> lying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first, Luce. No mop sponsor for this for this game. <laughs> Shout out to any listening. Get in touch at Emna. <laughs> Ryan Allen would love to hear from you. Uh, it's a mid-range shot. You can see the basketball style in the shooting technique that doesn't quite come off. I'll tell you what, Lou, some of the hang time that these guys have in the air is just spectacular. Yeah, somebody needs to check them for, like, wires or something. Like, are they being suspended from the ceiling on occasion? <laughs> I'm not sure. But I'm loving this centre battle between Jackson and Thompson Boston. And wow, that was a ball, wasn't it, Lou? That was a ball indeed. Nothing Kareem Brown could do about that one. And the score pushes out to a five goal gap. But a hand in from Ramsdale Owen, picked up by Brown. Nice time in from Thompson Boston. Just looking for options, but every lead is covered. Yeah, and look how Jamaica there were just forcing England so wide. And then. Oh, yeah, unlucky there, went offside. Oh, it looks like he might have hurt himself there, Jackson. He's a bit just, gingerly walking back. I just feel that with some of these passes around Circle Edge, there's almost underestimating just how extensive yes, the reach is for exactly, both sides, actually. Exactly, I think they're just sussing each other out. Remember, it's only the first game of the Test Series. I think really Test 2 and 3 is when they'll start to figure each other out a little bit more and we'll see maybe a, a higher level of netball being played with fewer turnovers. Yeah, absolutely, and draws are allowed in Test 1 and Test 2, not in Test 3. Also, you must have a winner. Be interesting to see whether England can pull this back with some stunning quick hands from Thompson Boston. Oh, he likes that one, didn't he? Yeah, that's exactly what they needed. The score was blowing out just a little bit, that five-goal gap, but England have answered so well there and brought it back to three. And of course, just last year, is it last year they went out to Australia and New Zealand? It was the end of last year, yeah, November time, I think. That's the Badger, and so much would have been learnt from that occasion, playing you know, some of the best men's netball teams in the world. Yeah. And like, I, I can tell, even from that series to this one, the difference in skill level for the England Thorns, they've come such a long way in such a short time. And we see Tommy Wiseman come on into wing attack for Ross Oliphant takes to the bench maybe just to assess what is happening of course as I mentioned earlier we do normally see Oliphant in a shooting position for his home team Highland Fever so maybe still a little bit to learn in that position and just a youngster as well yeah of course and I mean I actually really like that making a change during the quarter I think that shows really good coaching prowess from Sharon Lewis Burke there just to make that change recognize that something needed to change early on 
Jamaica again here looking for another one on the board. This is going to be number 12, unbelievably, according to the scoreboard. Wow, that just seems to that have seems come to out have of blown nowhere. Up suddenly, maybe we'll see if that might get corrected. No, it is apparently 6-12. We're clearly just not paying attention. I know, we're keeping an eye on that. Well, that's the thing is I just can't take my eyes off this game, Luce. It's incredible. <laughs> Wiseman here. Not losing his defender there. And nice play from Thompson Boston. Oh, you can see the Jamaican defenders getting ready to do that lift. Choosing not to on that occasion, but no doubt we'll see that very, very soon. I love a lift, please. Oh, it's just the best. James O'Connor, great marking of the ball. Oh, and the cheeky little off the post. Now, that was clever. Yeah, that was really smart there from Jamaica. Oh, I'm loving this game already, Luce. It is so spicy, and we are living for it. And this Wiseman. is what we want from men's netball, isn't it? These rivalries to start developing. Oh, and there we go again. Another turnover for Jamaica. Yeah, I feel like England is just ever so slightly playing into their hands by asking for the long ball because their closing speed is just outrageous. Yeah, they are underestimating them loose, like you said, but hopefully they will adjust throughout the game. I wonder if we need a change in the defensive end perhaps for later on in the game, maybe like to see something differently. Just give those Jamaican attackers something different to think about. Yeah, I mean, potentially a little bit of extra height with McClelland in there. I mean, there's lots of options that we can explore. Oh, footwork call in the centre circle and England trying to take it quickly. Very lucky not to get a held ball, but there's a bit of netball karma for you as the goal defence nearly takes out the technical officials. Uh, but just didn't have that finesse and control on the feed there from Jamaica. And it's back in the hands of Kareem Brown and goalkeeper for the Thorns. Lovely clearing pass into the midcourt. Ramsdale Owen finds Thompson Boston and Kai Lewis open under the post. Was that a Home Alone moment? Was that a Sue Gordian moment? I think it was Home Alone apart from there was a flying burglar. <laughs> <laughs> Attempted burglar, I should say. James O'Connor, the clock is against them. It's picked up by Ramon Parks. They can't quite find their here just before the buzzer for England that was converted. So a five goal gap for them to overcome. And we see Jamaica pick up where they left off with goal number 15. All the England players stuck behind their opponent at the moment. Oh, dangerous bounce pass in the midcourt. Yeah, I can hear my coach saying, no bounce passes in the midcourt, no bounce passes. Oh. And in terms of changes for England then, looks like the only one is Caswell Palmer in wing attack. So that's our third wing attack that we've had this so far this game. I know, Rajan Brown must be doing something right, mustn't he? Three wing attacks already. Thompson, Boston then to Kai Lewis out the circle. Both shooters are well away from the post. And they got down low for that one. Yeah, Shoddy got low, but it is turned over again by England. I think they're a bit lucky with that one, Luce. Yeah, absolutely. There is just not a minute's peace in that circle. Oh, the idea was right, just slightly too much on it. definitely feels easier through court transitioning for Jamaica than it does for England. I think so too, yeah. That was really patient play by Jamaica. They didn't rush it, they didn't do anything flashy, they just did the basics really well and worked it to goal. Very impressive stuff.
Nice patience being shown here by Jamaica, but good work in the circle from Brown and O'Connor. Oh, the no-look pass. Oh, my goodness. There are just hands in everywhere. Everyone just taking a breath as we reset the ball. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> oh, it's, it's almost too quick to comment. As soon as you say one thing, another flashy thing has happened. Ramsdale Owen, mid-range. You can see the basketball-style shot. And a lovely pickup for Jamaica. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I was going to say, there's no way you could have kept that in. A heel just over the line. That was exceptional elevation. McClellan then. O'Connor right in the middle finds Ramsdale Owen. Lovely cross court ball to Thompson Boston. The Suns are just so tenacious in defense. They're absolutely all over you. Yeah, and I just have to note there as well, Luce, that that change at the, in the second quarter, Jamaica Suns changed their entire midcourt. We've got Dwayne Jones in at wing defense, in center, Marlon McCallum, and the captain has come back on in wing attack this time. Lovely. We love a wing attack, goal attack slide, don't we, Luce? Yeah, of course. The captain for England as well, a wing attack, goal attack slide. Oh, it looked like a little bit of footwork was missed there. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I honestly can't keep up. This is, this feels so frantic and so, so much energy on court. Yeah, do you know what, Luce? This game is going to be about who can settle and keep composure, particularly in the second half. At the moment, there's just so much energy. There's bodies flying everywhere. I think it's just, yeah, feeling a little bit frantic. And England there with a missed shot and a scrabble for the rebound. But it goes the way of Jamaica. I mean, speaking of missed shots, I think you're absolutely right. They are sort of starting to get into the heads of England. We've seen Kai Lewis only shooting at 73% after that first quarter, uh, shooting eight from 11. So not the, the percentage that we usually see from him, but of course, first quarter, early days. Of course, and exactly like the Sunshine Girls, Jamaica can just score so quickly here. So look again at this scoreline, 19-11 now with five minutes played in the second quarter. Yeah, just two goals on the board for England so far in this quarter. Ramsdale Owen then again suffering on the accuracy here. The lift, Luce, the lift. Did you see that? Oh, my goodness. And it's come off as well. Wow, we. This game literally does have everything. Got your netball wish list. This game is ticking it off. Strong take from Raheem Wallace. And the finish as well. Yeah, I'm loving as well that the umpires are letting quite a lot of contests go, which is really impressive to see and exactly what we want, you know. If it's not interfering because these players, you know, they're so strong, they're so athletic, then just let it go. It's been really clean, uh, really clean in terms of penalties, not too much whistle, early doors. Absolutely, Luce, right you are. Looks like we've got another change. So... Nathan Ramsdale Owen comes to the bench. Lewis Keelan goes into goal shooter. Kai Lewis out to goal attack now. Looks like they're going for a bit of a taller circle. And Lewis, probably much more of that natural holding shooter. Obviously one of the training partners for London Pulse as well. Now, Lewis, we're going to have to be specific here because we've got Kai Lewis and Lewis Keeling. <laughs> so full names only, I think. But yeah, I'm not surprised to see this change at all, really. Lewis Keeling has been a stalwart for the night's setup since their inception. 
Really strong holding shooter, very tall, obviously that height 6'7", I believe. And also I think what they're going to really benefit from is Kai Lewis and his defensive pressure through the midcourt. Yeah, I could not agree with you more. I think we have seen Kai Lewis in a defensive position at Nationals several times, so not an alien position to him. And it will certainly be beneficial through that midcourt because at the moment the attack just is a little bit too easy for the Suns. Pressure on Circle Edge with a little bit of a hip bump from Marlon McCallum. There's a bit of biff going on there, Luce, I have to say. I think they might be meeting in the car park afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and we see already we've had the overball to Lewis Keelan really trying to exploit that height. I tell you what, he's going to have to have some strong hands to rip those balls in against this Jamaican defence. Penalty falling Jamaica's way. Kurt Dale ball in hand with a lovely place ball into Wallace. Cheeky little shooter to shooter. And they're into the 20s, Luce. Wow, we, I mean, a 10 goal difference now. This is going to be quite a slog for England to pull this back. If they can get within sort of seven by half time, gives them a bit of a fighting chance, but they just don't want to leave themselves too much work to do in the second half. I just feel as well that they're trying to play at Jamaica's pace. I don't yeah. feel like they're playing their own game currently. And I feel they could really benefit from just taking a breath, utilizing that change of direction. You can't beat them on a foot race. Yeah, exactly. You've got to play smart. And there we go. Great footwork to come around the body from Thompson Boston. And the turnover goes their way. But this is so critical for England now. Turnovers have been quite hard to come by already in this game from an England perspective. They have got to make sure they utilise it. Whoa! And exactly there, exploited for standing still, not driving onto the ball. That was exceptional from Jamaica. That was a captain's knock if ever I saw one loose. Caswell Palmer, ball in hand. Of course, you might recognize him from the Super League. He is one of our Super League umpires. Lewis Keelan then is probably further out of his range than we normally see. He chooses to pass it off. Hi, Lewis, I have no idea that was coming. No. He was as clueless as we were, Lewis. Knock, knock. Who's coming your way? <laughs> Kurt Dale then. Is that a backwards roly poly? Yeah, we are doing gymnastics here as well, Luce, and you know. <laughs> Certainly, it seems like it as we see a mid range shot from Richard Hendricks, and it is sweet. <laughs> McClellan then finds Palmer. Kyle Lewis all alone at the top of the circle. I think they've got to utilize the fake a bit more because they've got to get these Jamaican defenders moving. They can't just give that ball nice and low like that on the first second. They've got to use that fake, shift them, and then release quickly because we know they can release quick ball. Yeah, absolutely. See, that was smart play, smart placement from Kai Lewis. And the classic jump shot there from Lewis Keeling. Here we go, another change for England. Looks like Damien Lewis, uh, Damien Williams, apologies, comes into wing defence. And we see James McClellan, just as we suspected, Lewis, go back into goalkeeper. Kareem Brown takes to the bench. Here he is, McClellan. Clever to leave that one. Yeah, I thought they might make that change. I think they just needed that extra little bit of height there back in the goalkeeper position. Cheeky off the post there from McClelland. Shouts of play to the whistle from the crowd. It's getting so spicy in here. Oh, potentially a little bit of a naive ball well across the court. That was almost on the furthest transverse line right into the depths of the pocket. 
England lucky to come away with that one as we see Keelan with the layup. It's a bit of an air ball. Picked up beautifully by Kyle Lewis. And look at that speed. Yeah, but now he's got to control it. That's better on the shot. He's got a lot of tricks in his toolkit, but it's about making, maintaining that composure, keeping it nice and clinical on that, on that, particularly on the final finish. Looks like now conversations just being had between Anna Foster and Gary Burgess. Not 100% sure what that would be for, because there's no talk now happening to the team, because that would have had to have been to Kurt Dale as yeah. captain. So it must have been something specific that Gary wanted him to look at. Essentially an item of clothing that's just come off. Lovely arm from James McClellan just gets the contact call though. And Wallace with another shot for Jamaica. Yeah, really impressed by how Wallace has used his body to protect the space as well. Oh my goodness, the read of the ball from Ramon Parks. Like a steam train. He was like about six miles away from his starting position there. My goodness me, that was incredible. Damian Williams then finds O'Connor to the captain, Thompson Boston. Keelan right on the edge of the circle. He won't like that one. Caswell Palmer. Lovely ball into Keeling. Of course, Palmer actually used to play for Jamaica. He's got over 70 caps for the Jamaican side. And here we go, another turnover for England. Just no one moving for England at the moment. Everyone just static. Someone's got to show some leadership in this midcourt for England at the moment. There's the range of McClellan coming into play. Oh, and again, just centimetres away. As Wallace steadies the ship for Jamaica. That 10-goal gap restored. Palmer putting himself under all sorts of pressure by going on one foot there. And an incorrect throw in. Got to look after the basics, people. Kyle Lewis, clever shield of the ball with the body. Keeling then with his trademark placement of the ball into the goal. vision in attack for England. Thompson Boston challenging in the air. Kurt Dale comes up trumps. Lovely use of the baseline from Richard Hendricks. England then into the final minute of the second quarter. Top of the circle, lovely ball into Kai Lewis. Much more calm and controlled and composed on that passage of play. Damian Williams with the stretch, can't quite get there. The split from Hendricks is really something to behold. I know it's gonna look good on camera, but boy, does it look good in person. bit of time wasting from England then. Apparently favouring Traeger it is 29 to 18. So England have got a big job on their hands if they want to bring this back to a redeemable scoreline and therefore a win for the first 
of three tests. We've seen no changes for England from how they finished that second quarter. They go into the third with the same lineup. And for Jamaica, a couple of changes. So Anik Foster and Ramon Parks have swapped positions. So Foster back into goalkeeper, Parks into goal defence. And Naturi Jackson comes back on into centre where he started the game. Lewis Keelan then with his trademark shot. Or oh, you can hear him getting the crowd on their feet. They are pumped and they are ready to back the boys in red to their first win. Will it be possible? Have they left themselves too much work to do? We'll just have to wait and see. Kurt Dale then with a stunning ball into Hendricks, who has splits to die for. And gets goal number 30 on the board for Jamaica. Oh, that was a risky ball, but it paid off. Living on the edge here for England. I kid you not, Kai Lewis must have gone genuinely about three or four feet in the air then. That was just crazy, crazy stuff. That's like Fumi Fadoji style hops. Right? Great work from England. It definitely feels like they've come into this second half much more composed. Like we said earlier, it felt like they weren't playing their own game. It feels like they've rectified that now. I also think as well, composed but also relaxed. You can see them having a little boogie and a dance before the game started for the second half. But oh no, a foot out of court there. That is really unfortunate. That was a valuable turnover for England. Yeah, and it was patient through court play, but they are living life on the edge by doing these long cross court balls because they will get picked off. They're going to get found out. As we see Thompson Boston with a stunning intercept. See, this is much better composure now. Palmer on the ball finds Lewis. Oh, I thought that one was going to be slightly too short, but it's nothing but. Chants of England ring around the arena. A lovely swing of the circle, a double dodge from Lewis. Contact on circle edge by Dwayne Jones. Kai Lewis, he's backing himself. It was a big shot. Probably could have done with just recycling that one. Yeah, I think so. I don't think this is the time to go for the long shot. Nine goals down just into the second half. I think they need to be going for high percentage and really converting those turnovers. But when it's so difficult to get the ball to goal, sometimes you just... And I love the confidence that he's just gone for it, but I think you're right. Well, shooters, they're kind of damned if they do and damned if they don't, aren't Absolutely. they? It's really difficult. Could be a shooter, eh? <laughs> she says, flicking her hair. <laughs> but we see another turnover for England. They've made it into the goal third, relatively untroubled. Smart and Thompson Boston just calls for calm, calls for steady. And that's really important for your captain to do. I love a captain in centre because it just gives you, oh. He knew as soon as he left his hands. That was such a pity from Palmer. I'll tell you what, I'm loving this battle between Damian Williams and Kurt Dale. Wing attack and wing defense. That is definitely one to keep your eye on. Uh, James O'Connor gets a little hand in, frustrated not being able to pull that one in. He's probably been a little bit quiet this game. I was just about to say that, Lisa. I feel like he's getting a little bit of hand to ball, but it's not necessarily being those clean intercepts, and it's not necessarily winning a complete turnover. But here's an opportunity now for England. What can they do with it? Williams, big ball into Kai Lewis. Back to Williams. Sometimes just needs to give that ball a little bit quicker.
of netball, my goodness. Oh, but then just wasted again. That's really unfortunate there from England. That could have been a real momentum shift in this game, but unfortunately still 11 goals down. Oh, I'm still not over that. Absolutely sensational. Jamaica then, nice use of the triangle. It's a mid-range shot. Can McClellan get a hand to it? He did. It's a Jamaica throw in. Cheeky little shove from O'Connor, just letting him know that he's there. Oh my goodness. Every time he goes up in the air and then lands in the splits. I hold my breath. It's, it's tantalizing netball, Ace. Damian Williams just needs to watch some of those contacts. Beautiful outside arm, McClelland. I'll tell you what, his, the speed of his footwork has improved immeasurably since yeah. Nationals last year. Absolutely, and he's a tall fellow as well, so when he gets that footwork nailed, as he has done, you can, he's such a threat in that goalkeeper position. And this probably is the defensive lineup that I would have started with, with him in goalkeeper and O'Connor out front in goal defence. of work in the circle for Jamaica. Oh, it finds its way to goal. Gap now out to 12. This is danger time for England. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the quarter scores. 9-14 in the first, 9-15 in the second. So this is trending very well for Jamaica. And actually, there's some interesting stats at the end of half time uh, for England. Kai Lewis, we just saw that sensational bit of play from him. His shooting percentage really picked up in that second quarter. He shot 100%. His overall percentage is lifted now from 73 to 81, so much better from him. Jamaica, significantly more penalties, 31 to England, 17. Yes, wow. still way out in front, which is quite interesting. That's very unusual, and we're seeing another substitution here as Keeling goes to the bench in favour of our 6 foot 10 London Giants giant Julian Vincent. Bit of a naive feed there from Palmer. Lovely no look pass. Ala Katuvaiti. Jamaica looking steady and cool. Well, you know, it feels like the wind has been sucked out of England, but there's McClelland! Right on cue, just when you need a turnover. It's our long boy in the back. There's that big ball in. There it goes, it pays off. And that will be exactly what he's been brought on to do, Luce, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad, is it? 13 goals down and you bring on a 6 foot 10 goal shooter. There we go again. Lovely strong hands as well. Oh, it's giving me Janelle power. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the crowd are so hyped. As we see Vincent put goal number 24 on the board. The gap's still 12, though. Still lots of work for England to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, six minutes left to play in this quarter. 12, the difference. That is a really tough ask. Both shooters well out of the circle for Jamaica. But beautifully sighted by Naturi Jackson. Yeah, I just didn't feel like there was anyone really contesting any of those passes there from England. Jamaica just being given free reign a little bit in that attacking end just now. to Julian Vincent, and there's goal number 25. Jamaica with the centre pass. Oh, look at that. Space completely open. 
James McClellan try as he might, just can't stop that one. Kyle Lewis then really come into his own in the second half of this game. He's asking for it, or oh, couldn't quite collect that one. Contact has been called. Yeah, I think Vincent was a little bit lucky there. That could have been soft hands, but there he is holding, as we know he does so well. He genuinely can almost just place the ball into the net. It's wild. Kurt Dale then for Jamaica. Big hands from Damian Luke Williams. Nice try from Kai <laughs> Lewis. It's always worth a shot, isn't it? Yeah, you never know. But our Super League umpires not missing a thing. A tough job on their hands, Gary Burgess and Jenny Fissenden. This is one heck of a spicy game. Kai Lewis going backwards to O'Connor. They find Palmer in the middle of the court. There's the captain. Vincent further out than he would like to be. Certainly doesn't mind the body and up in the circle, does he, Vincent? And a beautiful shot from Lewis. He's not even fast, is he? And what I liked there is he was offering a different angle, really strong with that arm up in the air, very clear on where he wanted the ball. That's really important for the feeders. You just wonder if perhaps the change had been made slightly earlier. Oh, it might be... oh, <laughs> oh and O'Connor as well. God, talk about razzmatazz. I mean, this game has everything. <laughs> Damian Williams, he's going to have to watch those penalties. They're starting to rack up a little bit. Good challenge from McClellan, just bodying up. Not happy to take it, but quick reactions from Hendricks. Oh, beautiful take, Raheem Wallace. And again, there's that using the post. We normally see that for a throw in, don't we, Lewis? I've never actually seen it in a game just before a shot but do you know what it does as well as looking pretty cool and stylish it also just pees off the defenders <laughs> because it's just the most irritating thing isn't it when someone just does that cheeky move oh. as you tell a lie we've seen Prescovia piece and quattro do it a number of times that's haven't true we? that's very true Jamaica then on the attack Kurt Dale there he is again. Oh, my goodness. That was almost a teddy bear roll. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a forward roll, a teddy bear roll. Backwards, backwards roll. roll. <laughs> Tell you what, these guys are going to know they have played a game tomorrow. Oh, lovely play from Jamaica into Wallace right on the goal line. I don't actually think he's missed a shot yet this game. I, yeah, I have to agree, Luce. Really solid under the post. Definitely putting his hand up for player of the match, as is that gentleman, Jackson, in centre. My goodness me. Oh, an easy pick up from McClellan there. I tell you what, the umpires are going to know that they've had a workout as well. So much running. That was a wonderful take from Julian Vincent under all sorts of pressure. Gets the penalty. Oh, it teases last, but it bounces in. Naturi Jackson to Dale. So unlucky, just the contact call, a little bit of holding, I suspect. Holding? Defenders? Never! <laughs> Me, umpire? <laughs> the 
Welcome back, everybody, to the fourth and final quarter of England v Jamaica. If we just take a look at some of the stats from uh, the game so far, I think shooting stats is probably the one that sticks out to me most. England currently on 74%, Jamaica on 93. A really big difference there, as we see Kai Lewis with a spectacular attempt to keep the ball in play. And England's penalty has crept right up now. It's 30 to 39. There was a significant disparity at the end of the first half. Oh, and Kai Lewis with the layup. You love to see it. He is enjoying himself right now. So the only changes for England, around, uh, Nathan Ramsdale-Owen, who started the game in goal attack, now enters in wing attack. That wing attack position has been a bit of an issue for England. Yeah, in it has been, and they've just lost the ball there, unfortunately, in the attacking third again. They haven't really settled on that lineup, and the wing attack position is so critical, because if you can get that wing attack to goal shooter connection really nice and firing, then you're working well, and I think that's what Jamaica have done beautifully. Yeah, we have seen a few changes from Jamaica, but not to the extent of England. I wonder whether that's worked in their favour. <laughs> uh, and a pick up there from Jamaica. Again, another missed shot for England. But they are being put under all sorts of pressure. Kurt Dale. There he is, ball in hand. Nice quick ball into Hendricks, and he nets it. Yeah, and I've loved the confidence from Jamaica as well. They've been happy to shoot from distance when needed, work it around patiently when needed, and they just weathered the storm in that third quarter. Oh dear, that's a commentator's curse, isn't it, Luce? If ever I saw one. <laughs> McClellan then with the throw in. James O'Connor, beautiful roll off the body, finds Williams to Kai Lewis. Big cross court ball, and that is what you just cannot do with this tenacious Jamaica side. Yeah, you simply can't throw across two channels like that. It's just going to get eaten alive by Jamaica. And in the blink of an eye on Circle Edge. Oh, sneaky moves, Lewis. So cheeky. So, so cheeky. As we see another lovely shot from Wallace. Just feel like the jam's been taken out of England's donut a little bit. Looking yeah. a little bit flat now. I think you're right, but I think they do need to remember this is a three-match test series, okay? This is test one. This is sussing each other out, seeing what the vibes are. We've got two huge games in Nottingham back-to-back -back this weekend. So I think that England need to be learning from this, learning from the mistakes. Maybe they need to think about reflecting, particularly in that second quarter, why they sort of let the wheels come off a little bit at times and then just looking ahead to the next game. Yeah, and I wonder if we might see some changes to the squad for the second fixture as well. Obviously some notable omissions, Chris Green, one of them. Yeah. Really dynamic mid-quarter slash goal attack. Potentially see him be brought into the matchday squad for Saturday as well. And the youngster, Luke Owen. Be a bit of a baptism of fire for him. It would be indeed, but that's how the young players need to learn. They need this exposure and experience. Luke Owen, if I remember correctly, a bit of a standout from that Australia and New Zealand series at the end of last year. Yep, you're absolutely right. He played a blinder. Almost the pick up from Williams. Honestly, this, this battle between Kurt Dale and Damien Williams has been my favourite all game. It, there is no love lost between these There's two. There's so many battles, though, Luce. I mean, Jackson, Thompson, Boston in the centre. It's just... Oh, my days. And there's that off-the-post pass again. Such good game smarts. Just feels like Jamaica are just going about their business. Yeah, absolutely. Not phased at all. Nice quick three passes to goal there. Exactly what you want. 
really difficult to stop as well. And the gap now, 19 loose. Yeah, probably not what I expected. And probably not what England expected either. But to be honest, you don't really know what to expect. We've never seen this Jamaican Suns team play in England before. Obviously, they were, <coughs> excuse me, they were undefeated in the 2022 America's Men's Netball Championship in St. Vincent. Kurt Dale was the captain then as well. A historic victory for them. Jamaica here just taking their time. No need to rush. They've really taken the pace out of the game, but we know they can turn it on when needed. And that's a beautiful ball into Wallace. Yeah, I'd like to just see a bit of a tighter defensive unit from England then. Not a single pass was challenged then on the receipt of the ball. Everyone able to catch it cleanly. I'd like to just see them challenge more on the hands. James O'Connor then for England. He's asking for it. There's that big ball over to Julian Vincent. Absolutely no problem with the hands all over him. No. It's like swatting a fly away, basically. <laughs> tricks in the bag it's just so impressive yeah i do think they were playing with them a little bit in that passage of play eight minutes left on the clock important for england i think to finish strong here to try and win this last quarter to just give them that confidence going into the second test yeah i mean rams their own doing an immense amount of work to get free on that center pass williams then with a pass to the knees. <laughs> Huge swing across the circle. Wowza. Oh, just a little bit too quick there. But on oh, offside call. Oh, that's controversial from GB. That's controversial. Looked like he might have been helped offside a little bit, but. Umpire's call is final. Damien Williams there pleading to the umpire. Got to play to the whistle. Not enough on that feed. Just needed to show a little bit more patience, a little bit more trust in his teammates to get themselves available as well. <laughs> Out of court called and a change being made, and Tura Jackson takes it to the bench. He's had a really fabulous game, started in center, did quarter three and quarter four, or most of quarter four in center. Wholesale changes then for Jamaica. We'll bring you confirmation of those shortly. As McClelland looking for some help and the, oh my goodness. Nearly taken out the DJ there. DJ, DJ. <laughs> Thompson, Boston, oh, just through the hand, spent it before he earned it. Kyle Lewis not looking super comfortable. That'll be a big loss for England if that's an injury as we see Tommy Wiseman take up the GA bib. Such a dynamic player, be really interested to see how he can dominate that shooting circle. I believe he is also one of London Pulse's training partners. As we see Kurt Dale just clutching his leg there and then sprinting at full speed. So can't be too badly injured. Elevation from Wallace, my goodness. So, Luz, do you want to run us through the changes for Jamaica? 
Yep, so in goal defence, Dwayne Jones has come in, wing defence, Javan Hall, and in centre, O'Neill Stewart. So getting some uh, bench players out on the court for these final six minutes. Yeah, really smart play. You need to be able to rest some legs ahead of a double header this weekend. Oh, what a take from Julian Vincent. Out of court for England. Another change made. Kurt Dale goes to the bench. He has been truly outstanding today. Wallace well out of the circle for Jamaica. Yeah, just misjudged where the goal line was for Hendricks. James McClellan calling for people to come forward. That's better from Williams. And that's Marlon McCallum on in the wing defense position, excuse me, wing attack. And I believe that's all 12 on for Jamaica now. I mean, that's a great outing for them, isn't it? To be able to get all your players on court. And again, another change. Oh my goodness, they really are ringing them in now. It's the goalkeeper position. So Anif Foster goes to the bench. Tommy Wiseman then. Oh, unlucky to hit the post. Absolutely insane drive in. Oh, but the contact goes. The weight of Jamaica, an attacking contact. Now that was a bold call from Gary Burgess. Yeah. I don't know what just happened, Luce. The crowd has no idea. Well, both players went into the space at the same time, so it wasn't a case of McClellan not giving him room to land. So it's really interesting. Wiseman then for England. Big swing over the other side of the circle as we see the feed into Vincent. It's further than what he would like. It's a really high arc on the shot, very Echinacea-like. And Wiseman with his first goal of the game. And confirmation that is Shemi and Fairley on in goalkeeper for Jamaica. So that must be 12 on now, Lewis. Yes, must be. I mean, I've, I've lost count. I've got enough fingers and toes. We see a whole heap of changes as well for England. So James O'Connor takes to the bench. Damian Williams goes into goalkeeper. James McClellan pushes out into goal defence. Ross McCartney Oliphant goes into wing defence. And the attack stays as is. Wouldn't be surprised to see Thompson Boston go to the bench as well, just to give him a rest more than anything. Stunning outside arm from Shemi and Fairley. Contact called in the circle against Williams. Jamaica then, a little spin for the centre, gets us underway. Players need to remain disciplined here. Woof. Oh my goodness, these guys are wearing each other. Intimidation, loose. Oh, interesting. I think, anyway, that one. Yeah, yeah, the wave of the hand. I haven't seen one of those in Neville for a while. That was good defensive pressure with the two on one in the circle for England. And there's the result of it, the missed shot. I think psychologically, they need this not to be a 20 goal game. I mean, in an ideal world, I don't know, I've got a sneaking suspicion that Jamaica might get a couple more on the board before we finish this game. My goodness me, this has been a good one, hasn't it, Luce? It's just been so spicy. I mean, Nando's does not have a spice level rating for this game. Absolutely crazy stuff and a big cheer for England with goal number 34. Really is a performance to be proud of, despite the scoreline running away with them.
Tommy Wiseman trying to body up. There's arms in everywhere. Feed into Vincent. And he just places that one into the net. Into the final 90 seconds then of this first game. See, those cross-court passes, those are the ones that in England need to be on because they're exactly the same ones that Jamaica are on when England reciprocate. Big arms over from McClellan, but both out of play as Wallace picks up where he left off. Looks like a breaking call for Wiseman. Not how England would have wanted to end the game. But possession back with them. Just getting a little bit caught behind the defenders. That's better from Ramsdale Owen. Ooh, a little nutmeg for Vincent. Just 20 seconds left on the clock. England need to remain disciplined, can't be out of play. As we see a little bit of football happening, James McClellan kicking the ball off court. Damian Williams just letting the Jamaican shooters know that he's there. 